Hi guys, in this video I'd like to show you a quick project that I put together to help me evaluate things like uh, RF range, signal strength, transmit power, uh, and just overall RF performance between a small battery operated node uh, such as these and uh, an RF gateway. Uh, I had an unusual application with a multi-level, heavily reinforced concrete building and I didn't know what to expect. Uh, was that building going to act as a Faraday cage that just blocks signal entirely or was it just going to be very spotty? Uh, so I needed a quick and easy way to measure RF performance uh, of these low power transmitters. Over here I have the motion mode kit which uh, is fully assembled and it has this low power PIR sensor from Panasonic that allows the motion mode to run at uh, under two microamps and it uses this three volt lithium battery uh, which is great for uh, difficult environments, uh, extreme temperatures and so on. Um, and over here this is my go-to board for turning a Raspberry Pi into an RF gateway uh, and this would typically just be plugged into one of the Pi's uh, USB ports using this edge connector. Um, and I would normally, in a real use case, use a dipole antenna, which is a, a better performer um, large antenna uh, because you can afford the space probably at the gateway, but not so much in a compact node like this. But for this uh, test, I was curious how well uh, a helical would do on the gateway, and I just modified a um, RPSMA connector. I just soldered uh, the helical on the signal pin there, and, I, and this is how I uh, ran my test. And I'll share results towards the end of the video. Um, the RF gateway runs on a fast SAMD51 processor that clocks at 120 megahertz. It has tons of memory. Uh, it's plenty fast for handling a lot of RF nodes with uh, uh, doing a lot of complex math and floating point and other memory intense operations. Uh, so it's a uh, small format here. It also has this header where I can connect a small OLED like this. Uh, I squared C ground and uh, power so that's very convenient on that particular day that I did the test um, I actually put this in a bag in a ziploc bag just because it was snowing outside so um, it was easy to do that just because it's so compact uh, for this evaluation I just powered the RF gateway from a lipo battery because um, there's that header there that allows to plug in you know five volts or up to five volts and ground I would normally keep this unplugged while I program the board because um, that's shared with the USB power so I don't want that to have a conflict with the USB 5 volts but um, in the field I would just connect the battery and that's very nice and compact and convenient. As far as the transceivers we have the RFM69 which is a well-known and uh, ubiquitous uh, transceiver 100 milliwatt transmit power 20 dBm it's worked great for me in many many applications but you can use LoRa RFM95, RFM96 and other pad compatible um, transceivers uh, on these boards and all the boards that I make, um, you know, including all the Motinos and the kits and so on. So if you had an RFM95 application, you could do that with these boards. To do my test, um, I placed the transmitting nodes in a fixed position uh, and then I walked away uh, around the property and inside the building in the areas of uh, interest with the, the RF gateway and I observed the metrics on the screen. Uh, for the motion mode, as soon as the battery is connected, it will start transmitting um, packets and the RF gateway will display those packets on the OLED screen. The node transmits a packet every couple seconds and then it waits for a ACK back from the RF gateway. Um, and that way we have two-way communication between the two boards at all times with each transmission. Also, every couple of packets, um, or transmissions rather, the RF gateway will transmit another extra packet back to the node and wait for the node to uh, respond with an ACK. So that's an extra measure to know that there's good communication between the two uh, boards at all times. As far as the actual readings, um, that first number is the ID of the transmitting node. Uh, the second number is the packet number and the node will keep track of that and just transmit it in um, each uh, packet so it should be an ever increasing number and then it will capture motion with the PIR sensor and transmit that. Um, there's also a voltage reading, uh, a Fahrenheit reading, an, an X uh, metric which that means the transmit power and we saw how that ramped down as it uh, transmitted more and more packets just because uh, the range is uh, 
you know, very small. It doesn't need a lot of power to transmit these packets. But as we increase the distance or add obstacles between the two boards, that uh, might ramp up as the RFM69 library tries to catch up with the dropping signal. And that last number, the negative number, is the RSSI or signal strength. The OK, the occasional OK, is uh, is when the RF gateway transmits the packet and waits for an ACK, uh, like I mentioned before. As the signal gets weaker, uh, the RSSI will start to drop. The RFM69 library will help a lot with that and it will ramp up the power to try to uh, catch up with the dropping signal, like I said. And this helps me see if there's any dead spots in the building or certain areas with very weak signal and how the node will catch up or try to uh, still get through. Uh, in my test, the motion mode uh, was placed outside in a fixed position about 150 feet away from, uh, from the building. And to my surprise, there were no dead spots in the building, um, either on above floors or below ground, which is really great. So the signal, uh, of course, got weaker as expected when I got inside the building and I uh, went on uh, the lower level below ground. But auto power feature of the library was able to ramp up and uh, catch up and still reach the gateway. I will um, post the code that's running on these boards uh, in the description, uh, probably in a blog. And I hope this was helpful in some way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.